Hey guys, welcome to these new videos with All Carnage. So we're going to be here with all new Defender today. And we're going to take a first look. And this is going to be the Defender P400 in the SE trim. And it's a demo model, so we don't have all the nice specifications that we're going to get on the floor X or the first edition models. So we're going to take a full tour of the exterior, interior, show you a little bit of the powertrain, and go through all the really cool details that this brand new Defender has. And I have to say a big, huge shout out to Jaguar Landover of White Plains over here. You can find them in the link right here. And you can also find them in the description below. Definitely go check them out. If you live in Westchester, New York, or if you're in the New York or metro area, definitely if you want to buy a Land Rover or a Jaguar product, go check them out. Huge thanks to them for letting us review this um, new Defender today. Hey guys, so we're here with the all new 2020 Land Rover Defender. This particular one is the P400 engine with the SE specification. Now this color we're looking at here is Godwana Stone and this has the ebony black interior. And this is a demonstration model, so it doesn't have all the nice specifications, but it is pretty well spec'd out. This one's around $70,000, so you can really get these to a really high price tag. The design of the new Defender, Land Rover has taken from their DC100 concept from 2011, and they've implemented a lot of the similar designs from that concept. Now up front, we can see the new boxy shape, and we have these new signature LED headlights right here, and of course, this new boxy front end. Now there's gonna be a lot of different options that are gonna change the front end. So for example, these wheel arches can be made even beefier. And there's also optional, some cladding right here that's gonna match this cladding up on the top up here. So that is definitely an option you might wanna opt for if you're gonna be doing stuff off road. Uh, they haven't really gone that crazy on the front end. So we have some smaller LED fog lights on the bottom. But of course, this car has been designed for off road use. So we don't have a, have a lot of expensive things exposed that could be damaged. Now there is going to be optional underbody cladding over here, so this particular one does not have that, so you can opt for that as well. Coming along the side of the Defender, we can see that there are functional side vents over here. And of course, these side vents can be optioned with an air snorkel that can be used for off-roading as well. Defender, we can see that, that signature of Defender shape, and it's very iconic back here too. So we have the exposed cover for the wheel over here. So you can get a cover for that, it's definitely an option you can get. And coming around to the rear, you can see these new 3D taillights. So they actually can be, they're a little bit recessed. This has a really cool dynamic shape. Of course, you have your indicator lights over here. And of course, you have your Defender badge. And this is the P400 model that we're looking at over here. Now, of course, the Defender retains its signature design in the back. So the door does open from, get it right here. And the door does open from left to right. It is a really, really heavy door. It is gas strut, so it's easier to open. And inside, of course, we have all of our mats and everything. This is a um, demonstration model, so not everything's in the car right now. But this particular one, as you can see in the back, has the cladding on the back of the seat. Really rugged plastic cladding. Of course, this is also found with the rubber mats in the bottom over here. Now, you do have buttons right here. This is going to raise and lower your air suspension. Now, all the Defender 110 models come standard with air suspension, which is really nice. If you want a coil spring suspension for a more off-road feel, you can get the Defender 90, which is the three-door model. Turn around to the door. You do have storage on the side over here if you want to put some stuff. And everything's very rugged and durable. So this is a really nice, durable plastic. It doesn't feel very cheap. And of course, there's really cool exposed screws over here to give it that nice, durable, rugged look. Coming over to the space, it's actually quite, quite big. You have a low, a low floor, a really big opening up here to put things in. Inside, you have some nice cargo nets and a whole bunch of really nice stuff in here. Now, there's a lot of options you can get in the back over here. So they have things such as a, you can have a shower, you could have an air compressor built in and a whole other load of options. So I'll list that in the description below or I'll put some photos over here so you guys can see that. Another really cool thing with the Defender and this new platform is so rigid, they retain a really nice solid feel. So even when you close this door, it has a really nice solid thunk going on to it, which is really cool. It's the only other car like that is the G-Wagon. Now, of course, this platform is the new monocoque platform. It's not a body on frame chassis. So that means it's a fully aluminum and it's actually stiffer than the old body on frame chassis, which is really impressive. So that's good for off-road. Torsional rigidity is really strong. You're not gonna get a chassis flex or anything like that. Now we're looking at the 20 inch wheels options here. If you go for the four cylinder model, you can go for 18 up to 20 inch wheels. If you go for the SE model with the six cylinder, you can get up to 22 inch wheels or you can only go down to 19 inches. So if you really want those 18 inch wheels, you have to go for the four cylinder. It's kind of annoying. But, but for this specification, we're looking at the 20 inch wheel and this does not have the off-road tire. You can opt for an off-road tire on nearly all of the wheels, except for, I think, the 22s. I'm not really sure on that, I gotta double check. But um, these look really nice. Um, the, it's not that much of a low profile, so you still have a little bit of beef onto the tire, but you can go for a thicker tire. Really nice look in the exterior of the new Defender. So now we're gonna go take a look at the inside. 
First up, you can see these nice doors over here. You do have a keyless entry, so you have your button to unlock and lock your doors right here. But as normal, you would just pull open the door like this. And just a quick glance at the door panel. It's a really, really big door. Now, unfortunately, Land Rover did not um, extend these all the way down to the bottom of the door. So if you do rub your foot or pant leg against here, it's gonna get a bit muddy if you go off road. Otherwise, the door is really nice. You have puddle lights right here that are gonna project at night. And the door itself is really cool. It has these exposed um, screws over here to give it a nice rugged look. And a great thing is the quality is amazing. So the old Defender, it was a little bit of a cheaper interior. It was more stripped out. This one's really nice. It brings the paint from the exterior on the inside. And of course on the door panel, you have this really, really nice, durable, soft touch material over here. You have all your window switches, your um, power seats, and your memory seats right here. And you have, of course, this one's opted with the Meridian sound system as well which have speaker grills on the doors and up here in the center. Inside, we can see this piece right here. This is actually part of the frame. So this is a um, structural piece. You can see these bolts right here, and this is gonna continue along the entire bar of the inside. So you can see it exposed right here. Before we even look at the interior, we're gonna show you this right here. So this piece is a magnesium st um, structural bar going across the entirety of the interior. and has, even has the fender stamped into it right there. It's a really cool look. It kind of gives you a more rugged feel. It also makes this screen floating, so I can actually stick my hand behind here and go all the way around. And you can actually even use this as storage back here. And they even give you a power outlet or a USB port right here, so you can put stuff in this little rubberized charging mat up here and charge it, which is a really nice feature. So now that we're inside of the new Defender, we're gonna close the door. Really nice, solid thunk. Of course, we have this new D7X chassis. It's super rigid and super strong automatic windows of course so now that we're on the interior we're gonna lower the music so we don't get any copyright problems over here and on first glance in the interior it doesn't look like there's a lot going on and a lot of people have asked why do they put all this stuff over here and the big question is you can actually get this interior in three different configurations so right now we have the five seat configuration so we have of course the two pass or those two seats up front and then the three seats in the rear now you can get a third row that will fold all in the back and you can actually option for a jump seat up here so this entire center console right here can be removed um, and you can have an optional jump seat so it will fold up like this right here, and we can fold down and we'll turn into a center console. So then you'll have a six passenger seating configuration. So that's why they put all this stuff up here. So if you do opt for that, um, this piece can fold up and down and this whole center area will be free from all of these controls. Now, at a closer glance in the interior, we'll look at the driver's area first. A really nice leather steering wheel. Now, all the Defenders, thankfully, do get a leather steering wheel regardless of the seats. Um, this particular one has the cloth and leather seat combination. So it's actually this really durable material. I, you guys have to check it out in person. Um, it feels really strong, so it doesn't feel like it's gonna tear or break over time, which is really nice. And this leather on the inside is perforated and it's a really cool design. Um, you guys can't feel them right now, but the seats themselves are really comfortable actually, which is nice. Um, the seating position is very commanding and high off the ground, which is a great feeling, especially if you're going to be off-roading. Now looking at the steering wheel right here, we have a really nice steering wheel, like I said before. This piece inside is actually a, a metal, and it has this nice uh, anodized, grippiest material around it, which is really cool. Of course, some other cool things about the steering wheel is you do have all of your controls in the center, as this is a fully digital display. Now to access this on this left control panel, you can touch the center, and it's going to go from the, your normal uh, modes, and now right now, all these buttons are going to be controlling this screen. But as soon as you press the center button, the buttons will change to this design and you're going to be able to control this centerpiece. Now you have all nice controls over here about your different display, your trip information, media, um, vehicle stuff, and all like that. And you do have different kind of designs over here with your different information panel. You have add or include a lot of different stuff like that. Go out. And of course, you can change your layout as well. So you have these two dial design right here. You can go to a one dial design, which is this, and you'll have your um, navigation screen over there. You can also add a full map design, kind of like how Audi does it, um, where this entire screen will be the map. I have, you can have a media design over here. So it's going to make it focus on your media, so you this information over here, and I'll put the speedometer over there. And then you do have your driver assistance um, modes. You do have adaptive cr cruise control and all this stuff like that. It's going to display that in the center on the right over there instead of the media, for example. Otherwise, you have your normal um, windshield wiper stock right here. And you have your uh, turn signals over here with your automatic LED headlights. And the stocks themselves feel very sturdy, which is nice. They don't feel cheap. And these caps are finished in metal, which is another really nice touch. Of course, up here, you have your digital gauge cluster. Now, coming along to the center area, 
I do have this a lot of space. You have a lot of storage down here. This whole bottom piece is a rubberized, which is really nice. And of course, like I continue on, all the materials are really nice and solid. This is actually not um, hard plastic. It's this rubberized, durable material. It feels like you'd find it in like a construction site or something. It's really strong. I, really, I, I do like this a lot. Um, and again, going back to storage, you have a lot of USB ports, USB-C, so they're really looking towards the future. Of course, you have a cigarette lighter for your power outlet over there too. Now this center console is huge as well. This one actually has the refrigerator option. So if you press these buttons right here, there's some fans at the bottom, I think, or this one, no, this one is actually a real refrigerator. So it gets really cold. I'm putting my hand in there right now. I can feel it's already really cold. And you have two settings, right, of how you want to put things in there and keep them cold. This is an option though. Um, I'll close this and for, oh, I'm gonna show you right here. We have a wireless charger right here, which is really nice. Of course, we have our Defender keys. Typical Ram Rover keys, nothing that special with these. Of course, they have nice two cup holders with these grips in them so that they can adjust the different sizes as well. Um, also, this is a really nice touch they did over here. These center bars, if you don't get the jump seat option, has these exposed metal um, bolts right here. It looks a little bit cheap to some people. But personally, I really like it because it gives it a nice rugged feel, which is kind of continued out through the entirety of the cabin. And again, on the door panels, this is continued around over there too, which is really nice. Uh, and then we're coming up to this centerpiece over here. So of course you have your gear selector. This is typical, you know, Jaguar Land Rover style. I wish they actually did this as a dial and not this shifter. It kind of makes it weird to look at the um, touch screen. But I understand it gives it like a nice commanding look if you want to like grab it and shift into the gear. I do understand that. But the biggest options over here are just going to be your center controls over here. So of course you have your climate controls right here with these dials. Um, you have dual zone climate control. You can't opt for a tri-zone climate control, which is for your third row passengers if you do get that. And then all these buttons over here, it's a mix of climate controls and your off-road settings, which is kind of unusual. Um, there's a lot of things that are like mixed, mixed and matched. So up here you have your climate controls. This one actually has a heated windshield option. So I don't know if you guys can see this on the camera. But inside the windshield, here you go, if you kind of see it, there's a whole bunch of mini miniature lines going through the windshield. Now this is actually, the entire windshield is heated. So once you press this button in the winter, if you have ice on it, the entire windshield will heat up and it will melt it just like that for you. It's really quickly, which is nice. Otherwise, we can come back to this interior um, controls over here. So all these things will control all your off-road settings. So right here, you can see you have your air control for the air suspension, so it can raise and lower your air suspension. You can also lock it in a specific position so it doesn't automatically adjust. Um, of course, over here you have your low range. This does have an all-time all-wheel drive system with a, a lockable differential. If you do get the off-road package, you can get a lockable rear, mechanical rear differential at the rear end too. I believe there's a center locking differential as well. And you can actually see these differentials right here on the center control, which is really cool. So you can see the differentials in the back and then the transfer case in the center. Really cool thing to look at. Um, other stuff here, you have, again, your air suspension. This is your off-road cruise control. So, of course, this car does have hill descent control, but it also has an off-road cruise control mode, so it'll actually kind of, like, take you through a trail off-road, which is really, really cool. I do believe the Ford Raptor does this, I think. I'm not exactly sure. I, I feel like I remember seeing this. Um, this car can also tow. It can tow up to 8,200 pounds, which is a decent amount for an SUV. Um, you can tow trailers with that, maybe a small boat. And you do have trailing, um, trailer options right here. You can help with the steering. It'll help you um, maneuver into um, parking spaces and whatnot. And of course, through the infotainment system, you'll get um, specific graphics for that as well. Now this is Jaguar and Land Rover's all new Privy Pro, I believe it's called, 10 inch infotainment system. Unlike the um, current infotainment systems, this one is fast. It has over the air updates. It works really well. On the side, you can add different tiles over here. And so it's kind of like a smartphone um, style system, which is really nice. And you do have more of an app view right here, so you can see all your different controls. Um, like I showed you before, you do have all your cameras, but what you also have is a weight sensing. So this car can actually go uh, 35 inches in water. And what happens is there are sensors in each mirror, and what they do is project a sort of like a sonar or a radar into the water, and it will tell you how deep your car is going, and will show like a water graphic going across there. This is actually a better weight depth than the Jeep Wrangler. So if you really want to go um, into water, you can do these as an option. Now in your 4x4 info, it's going to give you a lot of different options. So you're going to show your altitude and your angles if you're really into that. It's nice that they have all these things as an option on here. First, with your infotainment system and everything, you do have your off-road functions. So as soon as you press this button right here, this is going to turn into your off-road dial, right? So you have all your different modes from eco. So if you really want to go in eco, you can. So you have comfort, then you have your snow modes, grass, gravel, snow. Um, mud and ruts, sand, 
rock crawl waiting so this is going to bring you into that mode where you can go into 35 inches of water actually it's pretty impressive and you have a fully customizable mode that you can go in through the infotainment system and make it to your liking. Now, of course, this car does come with cameras and parking sensors and all this stuff. So you can see you have a 360 degree camera right here. And you also have your reversing camera right here. Now, these cameras, of course, are 360 degrees. So you can see, you can select each individual camera. And it also gives you this um, nice three-dimensional view of the car. This is a really good system. This is highly comparable with things you get on like BMW and even Audi. Um, a lot of um, other brands like Nissan are starting to do this, but the graphics are just not good. This, as you can see right here, has really good graphics. And you can keep going to all these different viewpoints. You can even go lower and above. There are cameras all around the car. So this is really great if you want to see where you are. You don't want to hit something. And especially, you have this off-road button. Now this off-road button is going to be able to show you the, your front sides up front and of course this is a camera directly pointing front so this is going to kind of project a view as if the hood wasn't there so like i said before the hood's really long so this is going to kind of make it so the hood's not there so let's say you're going off-road you don't want to hit or destroy your front end with rocks or something use these cameras while you're off-roading you can like peer down here keep an eye up there and it'll make sure you're not hitting anything so this is kind of cool and if i do this button this is kind of what i'm talking about even more so it kind of creates a three-dimensional view of removing this whole front end and giving it a nice clear front end of view of everything you can see over there. So it's really nice, um, especially off-roading. You also have your seat heating and cooling functions out of here, right here. So if you press this, you can adjust the stuff going on with the seats that you can see right there, or you can go this way. Oh, this one doesn't have cooled seats. That's really interesting. It looks like it has cool seats, but it doesn't. So it's kind of annoying if you don't have that looking at all the time. Um, other stuff in here. Of course, you have your navigation system. It's really nice. This kind of lo looks almost like Google Maps. It, it honestly could be Google Maps. I haven't really checked that um, particularly. So it's really clear. Um, it's really fast. The response times is really nice. Of course, you have your zoom in and zoom out. If this was a plug-in hybrid model, it's not. You can, do have um, shows you charging sent. Um, charging stations along the map, of course, gas stations, a lot of stuff. And again, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you don't even need to be using these navigation systems. Um, so you can just plug your phone in and use that. Even though this is a great system, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with how they, they uh, configure. And again, you can have this um, space behind here. I don't know if I can show you guys here. Let me see if I can get the camera around. That was a really weird angle, I know, but you can kind of see, you can stick your hand back here and store stuff. <laughs> you don't want anyone to see it. There's a little bit of a pocket back there too. It's kind of cool. Um, the rest of the interior, again, is really nice. Up here, you have your, uh, more speakers with a speaker grill. You do have your air, um, air vents up here. Um, there are a lot of storage spaces. Of course, the door bins, you have a nice big wide door bin over here. You could put like two Evian bottles or something like that. Um, coming on the side over here, you have a nice um, storage bin over here. Everything, again, is really solid. It's all rubberized, um, so it's not going to get all scratched up. And yeah it's, it's a nice interior up front coming up to this, the top we have a nice full moon roof it's not fully panoramic of course because again this is a really rigid chassis and it's all aluminum so they want to make it really strong and, but that doesn't really matter for the back passengers because you do have those alpine lights in the rear so they will be getting some nice light in there too so if you want to open the sunshade up here you guys can see it open up in the smaller setting and then if you want to fully open it it offers a really big view, especially if you're off-roading or something, you can get a nice view with all the sun coming in. But if you don't want that, you can just close it up, which is really nice. And the center, of course, you have your sunglass holder right here, which is nice. Not a lot of cars actually offer this anymore. And then this mirror right here, I believe this is the one with the clear sight view, yes. So this one has a camera built into it. So let's say if you have passengers in the back or you have like camping gear in the trunk or you have a lot of stuff in the back, you might not be able to see out of your car when you're looking out. It is a big, nice window, but you have to just have some decent blind spots on the side. So they do offer a camera view. So if you flip this switch right in the middle, you can go from regular mirror, as you can see, and you flip this button right here, and it goes to a camera. Of course, you have your actual sunshades, which are nice and decently sized. Nice uh, LED light in there too on both sides. Of course, they do extend and they do pull out too. So Jacob and Yuri from the straight pipes, it does pass the visor test if you guys are wondering about that. It goes right in here. I like this little thing. I, I don't know why, it's just really cool. I don't know if it's really gonna do a lot because you do have your um, adaptive cruise control and all that stuff right here kind of blocking the sun already. So it's an interesting little feature they put there. Of course, you do have nice grab handles over here. And even the passengers have some nice grab handles over here if you wanna grab on the side. And these are actually rubberized on the inside. I don't know if you guys can see that. 
but these inside interior pieces are nice and rubberized, which is really nice. And even up here, this could act as a grab handle if you want it. Up here as a nice handle. Again, everything's really sturdy. I could pull this as, as much as I want and it's not going anywhere. Um, yeah, it's really cool. And now this particular interior is more of a rugged um, interior. So this is actually has a rubberized floor material. I don't know if you guys, it's coming off on the camera, but this is, it's a really nice rough and thick material. It's hard to describe on camera. And on top of it, it does have these more um, raised rubberized pads, which is really nice. You can actually get this option with carpets or you can even have um, floor mats on top of this that make it even more durable. But it's really interesting that they did this. I know they did say up front, they said you could hose it out or something. I don't, I personally wouldn't do that in a $70,000 SUV, but they do say you can do it. Um, you can also see up here, I don't know if you guys can see this, the seat's actually raised up on this platform over here. So it gives you that nice commanding driving position like it's over the vehicle. If you guys can see, check out the parking lot over here. It's a really nice commanding view over. Go move on to the back seats. We're gonna open the doors. And again, you have this really nice solid hunk with the doors. Now, coming down to the back doors, they're actually quite big. Open them again, that nice solid thunk. Even, again, the door panels, even in the back, are just as nice as the front. You have this nice, soft, um, rugged material over here. It's just continuing down over here. You do have the exposed bolts again, um, the nice speaker grills that are metal. And this is a really cool feature that they did on here. This is actually a blind spot monitoring for the back door. So let's say if a car is coming from the side over here, and you're about to open your door, this will beep and shout at you so you don't hit the actual door, which is really nice. Now coming onto the back, you have a lot of space. Now I'm 6'1", I put the seat in my position, so we're gonna get back here. As you guys can see, I have a lot of legroom. So if you have tall passengers, this is a great um, vehicle for the back. If you have a tall driver, it's good for them because they have a lot of space. So we're gonna close the door over here. Again, that nice, really solid feel, the chassis. Some nice grab handles here, so you're gonna be bouncing off off-road. But you don't have to worry about that, again, because the air suspension is gonna be really helpful. So now you can see more of this um, rugged floor panel back here. You have a lot of options for charging and uh, um, connectivity back here. Two USB ports in the center and good two um, 12 volt outlets on the side. Rear passengers do get um, their air vents too with the controls over here. And again, you can see more of this hanger right system right here, which is kind of cool actually. It is an option, of course. You have another hanger on the seat here. These can actually be removed if you pinch these in and pull them out. You even get more USB ports on the back of the seats too. So there are enough USB ports to keep everyone happy. If you have a lot of kids, this is gonna be a great vehicle for them too. Now again, with the seats back here, I, I think they're perfect actually. They're, the bottom piece of the seat is not um, flat. It has, it has a nice sculpture to it. Again, it has that nice texture material on the sides with the nice perforated leather on the interior of the seats. And it has a nice um, angle to it. So it feels very comfortable for me. And you get, do have adjustable headrests on, on the back. So interesting, interesting thing when you're folding the seats down, when you pull this top piece down, it actually doesn't go flat. So you actually have to pull this piece up as I'll show you right now. So just pull the leather strap right up. So this is gonna go up. And then once you pull this piece down for the seat, it's gonna go completely flat. Now, of course, you're gonna have to remove this piece right now. It's a lot of work to do. Actually, it's not that complicated. It's not that easy. Um, you do have this nice rugged pattern on the back. So this is actually an option. I don't think this comes standard, but it's, it, it's really tough. So if you have the seats down, you can put like a lot of rough materials on the top so it's not going to scuff up all the nice leather and the um, materials on the seats put these back up and this easily folds back right here now they have the center console piece right here with two cup holders and of course if you did option for the third row you would get um a third row seating back there that is going to be foldable so you guys can see up here they did a really thin design with the front area over here so this is for that water waiting so the water is going to be able to come up up to 35 inches on the vehicle so it's not going to be able to enter here now if you're really worried about that off-road you can get an air intake piece right here so it's going to come out here and go up along the side of the vehicle this is going to be an option and you have the different adventure pack options which is going to be make that um, available as well now of course this is the p400 powertrain so this powertrain is a three liter um, twin scroll turbo um, straight six is their um, Land Rover's all new straight six powertrain. It has to be coupled with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. This is gonna give you around 394 horsepower or 397 horsepower and a nice 406 pound feet of torque. So it's gonna be nicer on the road. Now the four cylinder is a two liter turbo four. It does not have that mild hybrid um, technology on there. And it's gonna be around, around just around 300 horsepower, um, which is not bad. 
Of course, this one's gonna have like extra cooling on the side. And this is a really good thing about this car is there's no fake vents. So everything you see up here is real. You have these um, air vents going here, air vents going along this whole side. This is real, this is real. Um, all these areas up here are real. Um, these vents up here are real as well. So it's really nice that they didn't put all these fake vents. Now again, other options, you can't have a tow winch right here. Um, you can also get a front A-bar protector. So it's gonna be this black protector that's gonna come up the front end. It's actually, if you guys can see how this is kind of flush, it'll stick out about up to here. Um, that's gonna add a little bit more protection on the front end of the vehicle as well, which is kind of nice. So guys, we are here with the new Defender, like I said. It was a really great time looking at this awesome vehicle. There's gonna be a lot of different specifications and all this stuff coming on. And I have to say a big, huge shout out to Jaguar Landover of White Plains over here. You can find them in the link right here. And you can also find them in the description below. Definitely go check them out. If you live in Westchester, New York, or if you're in the New York or metro area, definitely if you wanna buy a Landover or a Jaguar product, go check them out. Huge thanks to them for letting us review this um, new Defender today. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I look to be doing more of these types of videos in the future, uh, maybe more reviews and more stuff. Maybe I can review some of your guys' cars as well. So thank you guys for watching and make sure to follow me on Instagram.